Hi there, it's Professor Steve with our next video on how to accomplish one step closer to our final Audrey 2 animation. At this stage we're going to model the neck that comes out. From where we ended last time, let's go and get that geometry so that we can start in by making that neck. Let's go to the right view. Here we're going to turn on the... It's important to turn on the grid because when you snap this, when you make this curve, it's going to snap to that plane. Create curve tools. This time we're going to Bezier curve tool, then the dialog box. The dialog box looks like this. Reset. You can do any sorts of Bezier handle selection that you like after you get some experience. But for now, this should work pretty well the way we have it. So I'm going to hold down V just so I get it clicking to a vertice in the back of the head. We'll straighten some of that up a little bit in a little bit here. So let's get as many. Now, if you don't like it, go backspace, no problem. So I think it's important to get as many CVs through this portion of the head and then a little less at the bottom. Because it's making when it makes divisions, it's going to take into account the CVs that you have in the curve that comprise the curve. So let's straighten that up. I'm not going to spend too much time tweaking, but you can get a pretty nice curve right out of the right off the bat if you if you have a little practice. And that's, that's all that my is. Just practice and experience. How much do you love it is how much you'll work on it. So, And that yields success. So here we go. Perspective view. Yeah, that first vertice could be moved over and put more into alignment with the rest. Looks like I've done pretty well there. If you have a rough time, you can just go into top view and set it up that way. Now, if we are able to select all of those, which isn't possible, it seems, I'll go into perspective view and see if I can grab the whole thing. So if we went modify center pivot, it may, may work out so that you can move it over. So it's going to be in place so that when we extrude this soon-to-be face back here, we'll have a nice, nice neck. So let's take these edges away. Now we have an N-gon, a face. It has many, many points more over than the four that we need to make it a quad. But we're going to, going to go, we're going to go to object mode, then we click to face, then select that back face, right? Now, before we go, before we extrude, let's do a little more. Let's, let's do a little more. Let's make this bigger. Oh, don't hold down shift. It will definitely cause trouble. When you've selected this, you can hit D, slide that to the middle, and then when you expand this, it's going to be, you're not going to cross over in the middle. So let's make it a little taller here. And I'm pulling it out, but I should actually push it in so that the head will flow right into the neck. That's, that's the goal with that's the goal. That's what I'm going for here. Just pull some of these verts out so they look a little more organic. I'm just rounding the section up a bit. These these seem okay. They could probably stand and be pulled out a little bit as well as this one. Take into, make sure you're not selecting through the head. It's a common mistake here in 3D artistry. Okay, I feel like this face is going to work out here. So what's going on here? Is that the inside of the head poking through? That's the inside of the head. So be sure go to four. You can look at. Yeah, you can go in if you uh, think that needs to be addressed right now. Of course, we can do that when we go inside the head and work on the teeth in a video or two. No, I think it'll be the next video. Alright, so I'm just making that so there's nothing 
crossing through itself. It's just a best practice. Let's go to face mode. We want to select the curve first, then go to face mode. All right, click that. You gotta hold down shift though. You got to hold down shift, see? Now let's extrude. I'm not going to the toolkit because I don't know. I'm just doing best best practice once again. We're gonna to go to mesh tool, extrude, and see here. Alright, everything looks zeroed out or uh, default. Let's do it as default. Let's go apply and see that this doesn't quite look as predicted. No problem. We know it's extruding along the curve because the ending is way down here at the base of the curve. So that must mean something's working right. Just go to divisions and add divisions until it's satisfactory. Somewhere 16, 17 could work, right? Or just type it in if you need. Good, 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 good. Now we can go in for wire mode. <laughs> Come on now. Let's go. Uh, well, then we'll select it over here. We know the Bezier curve is right there. If we hit move, we can do this to see exactly what's going on in between. And know that we're going to, as we did with the head, delete these faces away. So let's do that. Let's line them up. Let's pull the Bezier curve until it's looking like they meet well in the middle. Let's click on the model, go to attribute edit, uh, channel box. We're going to go to the last extrusion in the history. Go down to taper and slide that down a little bit so that it's a little thinner at the bottom. I, I just think it looks nice that way. Now, now we can delete these faces inside face mode. Click on the first one, make sure we get them. And then hold down, hold tab. Tab, I wonder why it doesn't show up on the keyboard stroke. Okay, well you just drag through here. Tab. Huh. Well, that's what I'm hitting though. Tab. And then do the bottom one. You don't need that. And when we hit delete on the keyboard, we should be getting geometry that will be set up for merging or mirroring the two halves together later on. So let's go back to our Bezier curve, selecting it in the in the outliner. It's over here. That if I hit D, it's gonna make it so I can move the top of the curve move or rotate manipulator up here. What I'm going to do is roll this by hitting E and roll that curve so that it's going from here to there. It's not straight anymore. Rolling it down so the base, the two sides meet at the base. And then of course we can we can make up the difference when we take the edges and squish them together. Well, we can cross it over a little bit. That's fine. Let's just go into edge mode here. We're going to do the we're going to select the entire border edge. So, click, shift, double click. Does it select did it select all of it? All right. Hit hit to R for scaling. Let's go to the top view and hit D so we can make sure all of this will be in the very center. Hit R once again and scale it. So everything's flat, meets in the middle. Just, just really nice. Oh, let's deselect these faces here. So I'm gonna do that. Control. Oh, this side. This is the side where where everything's being originated. So let's see if we can do that now. R. Go to top view just to make sure. Hit D again. Just making sure. That's all. There, that looks that looks functional. If you want to pull it apart a little bit, just take the move tool, pull it away, and then later when we fuse all that together, it will be looking very nice. So here we are. We've made a nice neck. Let's smooth it out. 
And then you can, of course, move and manipulate if you want the neck to flow together a little better. I did some of that tweaking so that we ended up with something that looked like this. Thank you for watching. Next, we will work on the inner mouth with the gums and teeth. So I'm looking forward to that. Take care. Thanks for watching. It's Professor Stieg signing out.